Hello, and thank you for watching Hexagon Geospatial eTraining. In this module, we'll understand the fundamental concepts of GeoMedia and become familiar with GeoMedia and the GeoMedia ribbon interface. To begin, we'll look at a few basic concepts and terminology important for understanding and working with GeoMedia. There are three fundamental concepts important to GeoMedia the Geo Workspace, the Warehouse, and the Connection. Understanding these three terms can make getting started with GeoMedia easier and more intuitive. The Geo Workspace is the central document within GeoMedia. This is where the data is viewed, edited, and analyzed. The Geo Workspace is saved with the .gws extension and contains all open windows, data, legends, warehouses, connections, and more within an open instance of GeoMedia. A Geo Workspace can be saved and reopened at a later time. A warehouse is where data is stored. There are many different types of warehouses, including Oracle, Access, ArcView, and many others. Multiple warehouses can be connected to GeoMedia and supply data simultaneously to the Geo Workspace. A connection is the path used to pipe data from the warehouse to the Geo Workspace and is given a logical name, usually representing the data. The connection type is based on the type of warehouse being used and can either be read-only or read-write. Read-only connections allow data to be viewed and analyzed within Geo Workspace. Read-write connections are available for a number of databases, including Microsoft Access, Esri File Geo Database, or FGDB, Microsoft SQL Server, and several others. Defining a read-write connection allows data to be viewed, analyzed, and edited, which updates the data immediately in the warehouse. Here we see how these items fit together. In the middle, we have a Geo Workspace. Along the top, there are a number of different read-only warehouses containing data, and at the bottom is a read-write warehouse. Each warehouse has a named connection supplying data to the Geo Workspace from the warehouse. Now that we have an understanding of some fundamental concepts, let's take a look at a Geo Workspace and become familiar with the ribbon interface. I'll begin by opening GeoMedia using the desktop icon. GeoMedia opens with a dialog box asking if I'd like to start with a blank Geo Workspace, a template, or an existing Geo Workspace. To use an existing Geo Workspace, I can select from the list provided or select More Files to select one that's been saved. I can navigate to the directory containing the Geo Workspace I want to work with, select it, and click Open. I've opened ussampledata.gws, which is an example Geo Workspace provided with GeoMedia. This workspace has a predefined warehouse connection, legend, and map window displaying data. We'll use this to become familiar with GeoMedia. Let's first understand the basic layout of the interface. Along the top of the interface is the ribbon bar. The ribbon is composed of tabs that provide access to all functionality within GeoMedia. Tabs are dynamic, and available tabs will change based on the data and window types that are open. Each tab can be selected to display a different set of tools. Tools within a tab are divided into groups. Group names are displayed below the tools along the bottom of the ribbon. Above the ribbon is the Quick Access Toolbar. This toolbar will remain available as you change tabs and can be customized to contain your most frequently used tools. We'll see this in more detail in a few minutes. There are several different window types that can be displayed within GeoMedia, including map windows, layout windows, and data windows. The data window is used to display non-graphic data or attribute information. A layout window is used to create high-quality map compositions. Here we see a map window used to display graphic data. On the left is the legend. The legend is used to define which feature classes are being displayed from the warehouse and defines the styles and rules used to display them. You can learn more on establishing warehouse connections and creating legends in a subsequent eTraining module. I can easily adjust my view to show the data at full extent by clicking the Fit button found on the Extent group on the Home tab. By default, this Geo Workspace contains a North Arrow and Scale Bar. After resizing my data, their placement is not ideal. To move them around, I can simply click and drag them to a new position. I also have the option to turn them off. I'll click on the Toolbox tab, and within the View group, I see the buttons to turn on and off the Legend, North Arrow, and Scale Bar. Turning off the buttons will remove the items from the map window. I can turn them on again at any time. Now let's see some simple navigation tools. There are a couple of different options for zooming in and out of the map window. 
With my standard cursor active, I can use the scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in and out of the data. Scrolling forward with the mouse wheel will zoom into the window, while scrolling backwards with the mouse wheel will zoom back out. I also have a number of navigation tools on the Home tab in the Extent group. I'll select the Zoom In tool to activate it. Next, I'll draw a box around an area in the southern U.S. to zoom into this defined area. I can also click within my map view to continue to zoom in. The location of my cursor when I click will be centered in the window. Once I'm viewing the data at the desired scale, I can activate the Pan tool to move around the map window. Simply click and drag to change the view. Notice that the Zoom and Pan tools will remain active until I turn them off. I can deactivate these tools by clicking the Select tool from the Selection group on the Home tab, pressing the Escape key on the keyboard, or right-clicking with my mouse. Now let's see how to customize the Quick Access Toolbar. I'll move my cursor to the Quick Access Toolbar, right-click, and select Customize Quick Access Toolbar. This opens the Customize dialog. The left side of this dialog has a drop-down menu with the title of each tab available. On the right, I see a list of all tools currently on the Quick Access menu. On the left, I can select the tab that contains the tools I want to add to the Quick Access Toolbar. Once the tab is selected, all tools available on that tab are displayed in the Commands window. I'll select Home and scroll down until I see a tool I want to add. Select it and click the Add button. I'll scroll down further to select and add more tools to the list. Once I'm done adding items, I'll click OK to close the dialog. The Quick Access Toolbar has been updated, and you can now see the Fit All and Pan tools. I can also add tools directly from the ribbon. To add a tool this way, I navigate to the tool to add, right-click, and select Add to Quick Access Toolbar. Now I'll reopen the Customize dialog to remove and rearrange the tools on the Customize Toolbar. To remove items, I can select a tool from the list on the right and click the Remove button. I can also click the Reset button to set the Quick Access menu back to the default tools. There are arrows to the right of the tool list that allow me to rearrange the items on the toolbar. I can simply select a tool and use the arrows to move it up and down. When I'm happy with the layout, I'll click OK and update the toolbar. Now let's take a look at caching. From the Application tab, I'll select Options. On the General tab, I have the option to add a check mark next to Enable Caching. A second dialog will open, providing more information on caching. Clicking the Caching Explain button will provide information about how caching works within GeoMedia. It's important to know that although in many cases caching can provide overall performance improvements, there are certain workflows where caching is not recommended. For example, workflows involving multiple people simultaneously editing features in the same warehouse may experience reduced efficiency by applying caching. Click the Create Refresh Cache button to create the cache. In the File Locations tab, I can scroll down to see where the cache is located. I'll click OK to the Options dialog. Now let's look at various selection tools. When moving your cursor over features in the map window, features will become highlighted with a cyan blue color. This indicates which features will be selected by clicking the mouse at that location. Clicking turns the feature green, indicating that it's now been selected. Multiple items can be selected by dragging a box around items in the map window. The tools in the Selection group on the Home tab define the behavior of the Selection tool. Initially, we had an Inside Fence selected, so for a feature to be selected, it must be fully contained within our Selection box. Now I'll turn on the Overlap Fence option and make a new selection. All items contained within or overlapping the fence are now selected. Click the Unselect All button to unselect all features. I can also activate the Polygon Select tool to draw any perimeter shape I need to select my features. To make a selection with this tool, click to digitize the polygon, double-click to finish it, and click once more to activate the selection. Use the drop-down menu on the Fit tool and select Fit Select Set to zoom to the extent of the selected area. I'll unselect the features and set my selection mode back to default rectangle. It's not uncommon for multiple features to be stacked on top of each other within the map window. This can make it difficult to select a specific item. I can use the Quick Pick function to help me select the correct items. First, I'll set the cursor sensitivity that will define the Quick Pick zone. From the Application menu, I'll open the Options dialog and select Smart Locate. I'll use the slider under Size of Cursor Locate Zone 
to define the sensitivity of the cursor. As I move the slider, a preview of the locate zone size is shown on the right. This zone is also used to define the snap radius when digitizing features. After making changes, I'll click OK. I'll move my cursor to an area with multiple state boundaries and pause my cursor. When multiple features are present, three small circles will display next to my cursor, indicating a quick pick option. Clicking once opens a small box showing the number of features available for selection. Here we see three. As I move my cursor over the numbers, GeoMedia displays the feature class name and highlights the feature. I can move through the numbers until I highlight the correct feature, then click to select it. From the Windows group on the Home tab, the Properties box allows me to define properties specific to this map window. I'll type Regional Index to define the name of this window. Then I'll select the radio button next to Fit and Zoom Out, change the value to 150%, and click OK. With this option selected, each time I select a feature in the map window, the display will be updated to center the feature and display it at 150%. Double-clicking on a feature will open an Attributes dialog. When a read-write connection is defined, the attributes can be edited directly in this dialog and the warehouse is immediately updated. The General tab shows the area for this feature. Notice the area units are set to meters squared, not always the best option to display area for an entire state. The units can be changed by clicking Coordinate System from the Properties and Information group. In this dialog, I'll open Units and Formats. Under Default Units and Precision, I'll select the area and set the units to miles squared and the precision to two decimal places and click OK. I'll now reopen the attribute table and check the area value. The units and precision have been updated showing miles squared and two decimals of precision. When I'm finished working with this Geo Workspace, I can select Close within the Application tab. If needed, save any changes, otherwise click No to close the Geo Workspace. The Geo Workspace has been closed, but GeoMedia remains open, ready for the next project. Thank you for watching this introduction to GeoMedia eTraining module by Hexagon Geospatial. For more eTraining, please visit hexagongeospatial.com/eTraining. eTraining.